How are you? I'm feeling great, thanks, Hamish. It's yeah, nice to see you again, and um, I feel amazed, to be honest, that I'm still here and to be able to have basically a, a normal life. Professor Richard Scolia has a type of brain cancer so aggressive, most patients survive less than a year. And unfortunately, I've got the worst prognosis subtype of glioblastoma. So when I was diagnosed with this, yeah, to have your life turned upside down like that was was tough and got some getting used to. Richard is one of the world's most respected medical minds and was this year named Australian of the Year alongside his colleague and friend Georgina Long. They've dedicated their careers to fighting another cancer, melanoma. We've changed the game for people with advanced stage disease and this was a, another opportunity to, to try and make a difference, obviously for me personally, but for the field so future patients hopefully get a chance to to have better outcomes. Facing likely death, Richard put up his hand to undergo experimental treatment using his own medicine. The pair has taken what they've learned from their pioneering research on immunotherapy, which uses the body's immune system to attack cancer cells and applied it to Richard's cancer. He became the first patient in the world to have immunotherapy before removing a brain tumour. I'm in the neuro ICU. It's now Friday morning, so two days after my operation. It seemed right for me to, to go down this path for a cancer that's supposedly incurable and the standard treatment hadn't changed in 20 years and average survival for me would be 12 months and I guess it's a bit risky but it felt right to, to me to try and to try and do something that maybe give me a chance of living longer but whatever happens will create science that push the field forward in in a way that could never be done as quickly. You use the phrase a bit risky but I think that's an understatement isn't it? <laughs> Well, I guess when you drive your car, you don't know when you're going to have an accident and it's all over Red Rover if something like that could happen to you. The stakes were high and the odds of the treatment working were stacked against him. If you ask me what was the odds, I'm guessing, but I said, oh, maybe 5% chance that it would do something better. I don't know, that's a guess. But you were willing to back yourself and this with a 5% chance. Yeah, but I also knew that we would generate some science that would change the field and, and we have done that. 18 months on and 14 doses of immunotherapy later, there's still no sign of the deadly brain cancer. They have no sign of occurrence at this time. It just fills me with delight. And it could just be luck that I've got past the average and I'm doing well, or it could be related therapy. That's why we have to have a clinical trial to answer this question. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make the most of whatever time I've got left. I'm gonna enjoy my life, keep contributing to society and have fun. Richard's been sharing every step of his emotional journey online. Richard Scully here. I just thought I'd give you an update. Yeah, struggling a little bit emotionally. Yesterday I had the sixth dose of my personalised anti-cancer vaccination. I'm a little anxious as I've got an MRI scan on Friday. I guess most people that go on a cancer journey don't necessarily have the whole nation sort of rallying around them. What's that outpouring of support been like for you? It definitely is um, unexpected and I'm blown away that that there's so many kind people out there who it feels like they're barracking for me almost. Obviously the work you've done it's given a lot of people hope but have you found it's created expectation? I can totally understand when you're facing an almost certain death with the same sort of cancer that I've got it's natural to want to try something to give yourself a better chance and in some ways I feel guilty that other people don't yet have an opportunity to try something like the path I've gone down, um, but there are major risks associated with it. Throughout it all, Richard has kept working, running, cycling and even written his memoir. I honestly didn't think that I'd be alive when it was finished and when it would come out, so I feel the odds are getting better with time as you go on and nothing's happened. In the book, you you reveal that just before receiving the Australian of the Year uh, award, you had a pretty bad bike accident. <laughs> yeah, it was funny when that happened. Um, I've got this old bike that's um, that I ride into work each day. I was going flat track down the footpath, and I hit a bump, and then I went over the handlebars, sat on the side of the road for a little while, and 
rode the bike and did park run and then came back home and had some x-rays and it turned out I'd broken my neck. Has anyone said to you, Richard, slow down, settle down? Many times. <laughs> um, but I guess, I guess it's part of my personality. Um, what's this whole experience taught you? That's a tough question for me to answer, Hamish. I, I think the main thing is to enjoy your life. You don't know what's around the corner. A great motto is think big, be bold, be courageous, and don't just lean in, leap in. Have you done any weird bucket list stuff? Ha, I used to always want to bungee jump, but, but I was too scared to do it. But what I found out, I've got an aneurysm in, in my brain. Right. And if I jump down on a bungee jump, it could well have popped and <laughs> that would be well, it. Well, lucky you didn't do no, that. No, exactly. <laughs> What a superstar he is. Unbelievable. We get to meet a lot of people doing this job. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say, Richard is one of my favourite people I've ever interviewed. Oh, yeah. It's the time of year that you do need to buy presents for family. It's been a tough year for a lot of people. If you want to give someone you know or love something uplifting and inspiring to read, please read Richard's story. Incredible story. Incredible story. Just amazing. What a story.